Okay, so the blade, as I mentioned, is made of SUP9, um, very similar to 5160. Uh, it started off as 6mm thick, 70mm bar. Um, I'm using SUP9 because it's readily available. Um, Gamaco has a pretty good range of widths. It seems to just be manufactured mostly in around the 6 to 7 mil range. Um, so it's a good type of steel for these big bushcraft choppers. So the aim will be to get at least the edge to a pretty even 830 degrees, which is hard to tell by eye. Um, the back of the blade being so thick is probably going to work against us a little bit like a heat sink. So my aim is going to be to heat up most of around this area where it's going to suck heat towards the colder steel that I don't really need to have hardened and the spine up here. So I'll do a bit of preheating and then start to work down near the edge. Once I'm satisfied that it's kind of uh, even and I've held the temperature for a little while, I go into the oil. If I was heat treating in the furnace or in my kiln, I'd probably actually aim to do a bit of a soak, get it nice and even, but I'm just trying to display an easy kind of heat treatment process with tools guys will have access to um, and you know things that will help you get started making blades that might not necessarily be the best blades but it'll be something achievable that you can have a go at at home I feel like that time I had a much more even heat and the heat might have even been a little bit lower. Um, it is a bit hard to tell when the, you know, the sun is up and you've got light interfering with the colours of the steel in the workshop which is why it's never really a good idea to go off the colour. Um, I did check with the magnet but for SUP9 the hardening temperature is actually 100 degrees Fahrenheit higher than the Curie temperature. So I did check it with the magnet just to make sure that I was at least at uh, 1425 Fahrenheit, which I think is 770 something Celsius. And um, yeah, hopefully this one's turned out a little bit better. It's nice and straight, as you'd expect out of a 6mm thick piece of steel. And I mean, because you can't really do too much of an extended soak when you're heat treating with a blowtorch like that, um, you don't really end up with too much scale on the surface. But you know, this isn't really an optimal heat treat at all. But it's a good way to get started heat treating if you've got access to a blowtorch. There we go. Now I'll grind off the exterior and I'll test it with files again, see how we went. Okay, so I'm just going to test this one again, just with the file I've got in the workshop. Sounds very glassy. Yeah, it's not, not doing anything to that edge there. Try it with the 60 Rockwell test file. Yeah, it's kind of jumping over the ridges in the file, but 
not really doing anything to it at all. Taking the outside kind of scale heat treated surface off before testing is important uh, so you know you're not testing on a decarburized surface that might not harden as fully as it could or you might be testing on uh, scale which tends to be quite a bit harder. Um, even when I was grinding this I could feel it was like trying to grind glass even on a blaze belt. Um, another good reason to do a bit of grinding and just clean up the surfaces before you temper. Uh, having a nice clean bare steel surface will help you assess the surface colours um, and that can only happen when air is able to interact with a clean steel surface. It'll be really hard to do if it's like the, uh, the handle here, you know, you can't see any of the colours at all. Um, so before I put them in the kitchen oven I always clean them up like that. I want this blade to come out about 59 Rockwell so I'm starting off a little bit below 200 degrees Celsius and what I'm going to do is check with a thermocouple reader uh, that the temperature is tracking okay because this is just a, uh, uh, I suspect, fairly cheap domestic oven. Um, I'll use the thermocouple reader to check where the temperature is and I'll turn it up accordingly so I'm kind of erring on the side of caution. Uh, so I can progress towards 200 Celsius rather than set it to 200 Celsius and find it sitting at 240 where the blade is. Uh, I'll show a bit more of that in a moment. See it so it kind of winds up pretty close to where the knife is. So I want to be reading the, the actual area that the blade occupies rather than somewhere else. And I'll just close her up. So this is the thermocouple reader from Gamaco. I think they're about $62 uh, for this unit and then the K-type thermocouples are about $12 um, there are some there are some more dura, durable thermocouples available uh, but for tempering and doing these sort of lower temperature jobs I find uh, this one's more than adequate. So just turn her on and check the temperature like so. So it's sitting about so if that's 140 yeah it's still got most of the way to go. I'll just leave it in there and keep checking on it until the uh, orange heating light on the oven turns off and then I'll see how closely they're reading together. Yeah, so I got the oven set to looks like about 190 on the dial and yeah, it seems to be holding pretty close to that. The oven light went off about five minutes ago or so. It actually looks like it's a little bit under so I'm just going to squeeze it up to, I'll just put it on 200, I'll see where that ends up. Okay, so the blade's been in the oven and I've taken it out and just put it next to a unheat treated blade. This was actually the first one I did out of the SUP9 and you can see across here it's got a crack and I think that's because I had too much temperature along the edge and almost none at the spine when I quenched. So you can see that the tempered blade is now a bit of a straw colour and the untempered steel looks just to be a white silver sort of colour so that's what you're aiming for.